legislative leaders who crafted it and, and bore it, so I'd like to ask Representative Paul Marquardt, who chaired the House Committee, to go ahead. Well, thank you very much, Governor, and first of all, huge thanks to the great leadership by Governor Dayton, Commissioner Casalius, um, Speaker Thiessen, Majority Leader Bach, and um, big thank you also to all the conferees and all the folks who put so much effort into this uh, Bill, and today is a great day for our kids and for the state of Minnesota. And you know what we've done here is we have hit the reset switch on education funding and improving the quality of education for all students. And when you look back at this, we had historic <coughs> investments in early childhood education and for the first time in the history of the state, we're gonna fully fund all day, every day kindergarten. And we know that is going to provide the jump start to increase student achievement, but also to close the achievement gap. And by making sure that our kids are put on the path to the world's best workforce is going to send a very clear and loud message to every parent in this state that we are going to make sure that your child has all of the opportunities to succeed and we're going to make sure that happens. And, we're, and it sends a very clear message to our businesses around the state that we are going to provide you with the world's best workforce. And so uh, this is historic. It's a great day for Minnesota. It's a great day for moving our state forward. And it's a great day uh, for our students because we're going to make sure with this bill that each and every student has a chance to succeed and to be ready for a career college into the future. So again, thank you for the leadership from the governor and others for making this happen today. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is the best education bill to be signed in Minnesota history. It not only provides a number of needed reforms in education, but it sets the pace that we need for needed financial structural reform. It turns the tide of the past decade of fiscal uncertainty and puts in place the needed investments. So while we've heard a lot of talk in the past about initiatives for early learning and all day K, we fund these measures. And I salute you, Governor Dayton, because if we didn't have a vision for providing the funds, for investing in these students, we wouldn't be here. So this is a great day. It's not only a home run, it's a grand slam. You go to first base with the early learning opportunities. Thousands of students at risk in Minnesota now are going to have that opportunity to go in high quality programs that will close the achievement gap so they're ready for K. As Art Wolnick has said, 16 to 1 return on investment. That is great reform. All day K available to all Minnesotans regardless of zip code. Over $25 million has been spent by parents many in the middle class struggling. That could have been their property tax payment, perhaps a few thousand dollars, but having to pay for all day K, but now it's gonna be made available. And that will get us to second base because that's going to provide a great opportunity to provide the needed assurance that you are ready to continue on that path by having all day K opportunities. Strong bipartisan support, but your leadership, Governor, to say we're gonna provide the funds through that tax bill, which passed. So all day K, I'm so excited about that, and school districts are 
getting ready now for those that haven't provided it earlier because of financial constraints. And additional opportunities as we get to third base in special education. The significant amount of additional revenue and 40 million reforms that are, have been championed by Commissioner Caselius. And we also have millions more in vocational education rounding to home. We pay for it. We pay for it credibly by investing a significant amount in the formula with flexibility. We have a return for the student achievement levy that provides the needed base for providing some stability in our reforms that are needed for schools. But you put that together with the added funds, we have really hit a grand slam. I thank you for being a messenger, but mostly I want to thank Governor Dayton because you provided the vision through putting together task forces that involved many Minnesotans, Commissioner Caselius and her leadership in doing that, and this is just a great day for Minnesota. Thank you. Well, I don't know how you beat that, because that pretty much uh, <laughs> sums it up. But I, I do, uh, I also want to just uh, thank everybody that was involved in this, because this is a, a very significant and historic uh, education bill uh, in Minnesota, and it's going to set us up uh, for the future, uh, for future prosperity in this state. You know, we started um, this session talking away, talking about getting away uh, from the short-term thinking that has dominated things here at the Capitol. Uh, and we're, this year, I think in many ways, we have moved away from this uh, deficit to deficit, just studying the problem right in front of our nose, and moved to a longer term vision of what this state could be. And I think that this education bill uh, is exactly the, the, perfect, the perfect ideal of that, that we are looking for the next generation and what's going to make a difference for middle class families in the future. Uh, we made 2013 the education session because education is the single most important way that we can ensure our state's greatness for generations to come, uh, not only for the next two years, again, which has been the way we've, we've budgeted and the way we've done business here for too long, but for the next generation. And I think that's the true significance uh, of this legislation. Uh, I do want to thank Governor Dayton and Representative Marquardt and, and uh, Senator Weger for, and, and Representative Breinert and Morgan who are here with us as well and many others in the legislature who have worked hard, not just this year, uh, but for many years to set the stage uh, for what we've accomplished this year. And I, I, and, uh, I, I think I also want to just uh, also name Representative, former Representative Minnie Greiling, who's been such a leader on these issues for so long, uh, who really also got us, uh, got us to this point uh, through her work in the past. Uh, but most importantly, I want to thank the people of Minnesota because I think one of the things they did in the last election uh, was say and elect folks to this body uh, who, who are willing to say, we need to think longer term. We need to make some fundamental changes, take some political risks, uh, including a willingness to actually say, we need to raise uh, some revenues in this state to make investments that are going to lay the foundation uh, for the future. Uh, and I guess the last thing I would close on, when you hear um, others uh, across the state, whether uh, the chamber uh, asking in the paper today why we did things. In fact, the chamber, remember, the business community asks for many of the spending that you find in this education bill. And I hope that we don't forget that and that they don't forget that they are actually, actually asking us to spend more money, uh, although they, of course, don't want to pay for it. Uh, when you ask their oppo any other opponents of, of what we've done this year, uh, talking about wasteful spending, talking about taxes and why we needed to do this, this is why we needed to do this. Because the kids of Minnesota, the, the people of Minnesota are going to benefit from that through this education bill. We are going to get results. Uh, we have accountability in this bill. Uh, we are going to deliver on uh, Representative Marquardt's promise of building the world's greatest workforce because of the work uh, that we did this year. And I think in 10 and 15 years, people are going to look back on this bill uh, and see it as one of the, one of the landmark pieces of legislation uh, in education um, that we've had in this state uh, in, its, in its history. So I'm really pleased to be standing up uh, to talk about that today. Uh, but I really think it's important we make the connection between a willingness to make investments and a willingness to pay for them. And uh, that's the formula I think voters voted for last, last fall. And, uh, and I believe the people of Minnesota, notwithstanding all the political rhetoric, uh, fundamentally understand that. So thank you very much. What a difference an election makes. You know, two years ago, after a 20-day government shutdown, longest shutdown in our country's history of a state government, 
that led to the borrowing of $2.7 billion of money from our schools to a November election and a new majority and the governor's promise that this one party control will deliver progress. So we stand here today not borrowing $2.7 billion from our schools, but paying them back, investing $485 million of new money in K-12 spending. It is a remarkable day for this state. I want to thank the governor and the speaker for the hard work that we put into developing the priorities, developing the targets to uh, Senator Weger and uh, Representative Markworth for then following through on them. And then a very special thank you to uh, Senator Skoy and Representative Lincheski, because it was them who, along with Governor Dayton's initiative that put the tax bill together that makes all of this paid for. So a, quite a team effort, uh, a, quite a result, and elections do have consequences, and this one clearly does. This one sets Minnesota on the path for future prosperity. And as a father of four grandkids, I can tell you I am darn proud of this bill. Like um, so many things that happen in the legislature, uh, it's not possible to achieve um, something like this piece of legislation without the work of a lot of Minnesotans that came before us. And in, I think it was in March or maybe April, we did an event in North St. Paul talking about the value of all day, every day kindergarten and Principal Mikko, Principal Mikulcevic, was there and was talking with us uh, in great detail and with Minnesotans about the value of all day, every day K and his experience in the school. And he's here today um, because this is so important and I just wanted to give him a shout out and thank you as one of the people who worked so hard to make sure that we could actually do this in Minnesota. Thank you very, very much. I think everything uh, needs to be said about this bill has already been very well said. Although in the United States Senate, there's a saying, if it hasn't been said by everyone, it hasn't been said. <laughs> uh, but I'll spare you that. But you know, th this is a clear evidence of, of Minnesota modesty because uh, use uh, Senator Weger's metaphor. I, I with my budget, and thanks to uh, Commissioner Brenda Caselius, who couldn't be here today, but who's just been instrumental in all of our education initiatives in this administration, but we. I, I hear that's call it a double in terms of increased funding for special education and, and all day kindergarten and like at a, a, at a partial level. And then you, you, the legislature hit the grand slam by upping my uh, level both uh, in the House and the Senate. And I, I, said, I, I said to them, I, I don't mind being trumped as long as it's for a good cause. And this one certainly is. I mean, this is, the speaker said, this is why, you know, this is why we raised taxes progressively so that we could deal with the deficit, pay, pay that off without having to make more draconian cuts, such as uh, these programs here that would have been uh, inevitably affected by that, and have the resources to make these new investments that are going to pay off for Minnesotans, for middle income families, or for uh, people throughout the state. And I'm very, very proud of. Those legislators who supported this uh, effort, who have got uh, real progress to go back and say to Minnesotans, we said, did what we said we'd do, we did what you elected us to do, and uh, we'll keep, we're going to keep on as long as we can. So, do you the questions? Well, you folks remind us when the various provisions kick in, the uh, extra money and the formula, the all-day K, early childhood, other things. Mm -hmm. In other words, when will Minnesota see what you just did? Yeah. Uh, well, on the one and a half, one and a half formula, all of that will kick in next fall, 13, 14 year. The all day, every day kindergarten kicks in in the fall of 14, 15. And scholarships for the young? For yes, and those would be right away also. Okay. We have to set up the program in the Department of Education. That'll, that'll be underway right away. Okay, so next fall, the people with the young kids, three and four year olds will build the scholarships. That's, that, that, that's my, my expectation and it's also, you know, it may not be 100% then, but it's going to be accelerating to 100%. Coming there was uh, criticism from business groups about the uh, decision to end the high state's grad test, the high school graduation test. Um, but I know you felt there was too much testing. What is your 
feeling about what the bill ultimately did? Well, it never astonishes, stops astonishing me how the uh, Minnesota Chamber can can find everything that is wrong with whatever we've done and you know and just pounce on it. You know, we're in transition from a better from the old form of testing, which was onerous, which was absurd. You know, in the old uh, vernacular, you had if you failed the the math test three times, you passed. So in order to graduate, you either had to pass the math test or you had to fail it three times. I mean, uh, there's kids who were denied diplomas and then found out halfway through the summer that the testing company had made mistakes in their grading and they were denied publicly in front of their family, in front of their friends, uh, of a diploma because of the errors of the, the, the company and nothing was done about it. So this, this has reached, you know, I'm for testing, I'm for accountability, but not past the point into absurdity and that's where we've gone. So, Commissioner Caselius, if she were here, could articulate better than I, but she, we're going to develop testing, she's going to develop testing that is uh, modeled after, if not exactly like the uh, ACT, which is used nationwide, which is accepted by colleges nationwide, which gives us a much better comparison with what uh, other states, schools in other states are doing, and, you know, and we'll make that transition. But just to focus on the one aspect of it is, you know, Technically accurate, but but broadly misleading. Yeah, go ahead, please. So, well, I'd just like to comment briefly about that. That there is a long and rich body of research around this issue about whether a cut score is the appropriate mechanism with which to establish a graduation standards or, or a target for graduation. And this bill takes a strong stand, um, su supported by that research, that the cut score is a failed mechanism. It does, it's, first of all, MCAs aren't look, MCA scores or the cut scores are not looked at by any of our post-secondary institutions as a basis for uh, post-secondary, further post-secondary education. Um, what we're doing here is aligning the system and the standard will actually be higher. I think that's the important message um, because we'll be, every single student will have the opportunity for college and career ready exams. And that has not been true in our system at all. It's only been a smaller number of students that have taken that college and career ready exam. And the system will be aligned to support that, that preparation for that exam. 8-12, those, those exams will both involve families, align standards, and inter, um, intervene earlier in the system to help students in a more individualized way so that they'll have a plan that aligns their goal, their aspirations and career goals with their academic readiness. So I, it's a whole new era in testing and I think it places assessment in its proper place as supporting learning instead of creating a barrier to graduation. Is this the last year for the rest of my question? <laughs> <laughs> Is this the last school year for the grad test then? Or does this new testing have to be wrapped in gradually? Uh, the re graduation requirement is eliminated as of the signing of this bill. However, there is a transition period. So students, be because we have, the department will have to go out for a request for a proposal for the new examinations. And uh, in the meantime, there's a series of exams students can choose from, including remaining under the grad if they, if they so choose. For instance, a student may have attempted the reading test and failed and wants to do that retake instead of uh, doing a new exam. But there's a series of tests uh, in the transition period uh, that include, uh, they're under our, the EPAS provisions in our current statute that include a diagnostic, you know, the COMPASS or the ACT, you know, or, or a number of other exams that are the transition. But then once the RFP, you know, is the once the department puts in place a new test, which we hope will be in a year, um, then uh, the transition provisions change. Although students who are currently in high school obviously have the, uh, the right, as is understood, to graduate under the provisions in which they entered in. But that would be a choice by the student. Governor, the avalanche of bills is coming your way. You're, you're hearing from some outdoors, particularly on the, the legacy bill. They want you to veto it in part uh, if you decided. Uh, I've, not I've not decided. I'm, you know, I'm going on a fly around today. My staff is compiling information, and I certainly have heard from uh, many, many organizations, and I've heard from organizations in support of those measures. So, 
I don't know when I get permission to reveal that, but it'll be probably tomorrow or perhaps Friday. So pointing to your comments that you made as a yep. candidate about. Well, that's on the on the video. I, I said it, so I'm I'm I said it. So is that an indication of which direction you'll go? Uh, you know, I wouldn't want. This is a great story, and I'll give you something else tomorrow. How's that? <laughs> so that means you can all come to work tomorrow and build it on me. One of the big goals of this year, of course, was to reverse the trend of high property taxes. And uh, along with the tax bill and what's on the education side, there will be huge property tax decreases. And not only significant property tax decreases uh, in education, but there is also a lot more equalization, which will uh, create a more level playing field for property poor districts and property wealthy districts. And, and that was one of the goals, was to create more equity in this plan. So there will be significant property tax relief on the education side, as, as well as the rest of the state. We have time for one more question on the education bill. How confident are you that this, how confident are you that this money is going to achieve the results? Is it based on the research on how all the kindergarten works? Or is it other measures in that? Well, more money for education doesn't absolutely guarantee success, but less money for education absolutely guarantees failure. I mean, we're not going to improve uh, test scores, close the achievement gap, or get our kids ready for a very competitive world by, by reducing the investment in education. There's a reporter from the New York Times who was here, went up to Duluth, sat in the class with high school class of 42 students. And that's unfortunately too commonplace around Minnesota. We have school districts that go into four-day school weeks because they can't afford to operate five just to save the gas money. I mean, the, our kids are getting shortchanged because we're not willing to make the investments. We have not up until now in the last decade been willing to make the investments necessary to uh, give them the quality education that they deserve, that the uh, others have said the employers of Minnesota deserve, and that our future depends on. So now we are. With this DFL legislature and this leadership here, we are taking those steps. All day kindergarten is, you should have had it years ago. We're one of relatively few states uh, that doesn't provide money for all day kindergarten, and states that have far lower uh, personal incomes than we do uh, have, have done so. So we, we're catching up, and then we're moving ahead, and uh, this is being money very well spent. I think Minnesota will know that and believe it. There's a number of accountability measures in the bill that was just signed. We will require each school board to prepare a report in consultation with residents regarding the progress that is being made on a number of benchmarks, uh, particularly third grade. Are the students literate, uh, proficient? Uh, that's always been an important milestone in the journey. We'll ask for reports on that uh, annually, and adjustments uh, you know, can be made in terms of what's being done if there's not sufficient progress. And that's being coordinated uh, through the commissioner's leadership in the Centers for Excellence. We also have expectations on college career readiness, and we ask for a report on that as to what each district is doing to achieve that goal. Additionally, on the closing the achievement gap. And finally, graduation. We want 100% graduation. We increased the compulsory attendance to age 17, which it could have been 18, but at least 17 for now. But each district will be asked to report on its progress that is being made. So there are accountability expectations in statute. Previously, we had the expectation of ready for K by 2020, and that'll be a part of the reporting that we'll be looking at. And with some consequences if there isn't adequate progress. The Commissioner of Education and working with the, the district will be able to look at uh, up to 2% of the general revenue that a district has. It would not take that away, but would provide you know, discussion and uh, hopefully uh, get them on the track that's going to get them to the state goal that we have, which we have outlined. That is all we have time for. Thank you, folks.
Thank <laughs> you.